Alright, uh... I guess this is the post-TCS Nationals um, rundown, I suppose. Um, so, I guess there's a couple things that were you know, fairly important to look at. Um, first off, one of the big thing was, like you can see I got, this is, this is a bunch of lead here, and um, also a bunch of lead over here. You can see this is there's quite a bit of it. Um, and also underneath on the bottom here, um, I had like this is about four ounces total, two on a side. Um, so then that made a huge amount of difference as far as the way the car worked. It was. Um, definitely much much better tire wear was better I actually had to dial steering in the car um, and the problem part of the you know I felt like maybe I left a little bit out there because um I did have to dial in so much steering I really would have rather changed the car but it was in between the AAA mains there wasn't any time to make sure everything was going to work the way I thought it was going to work and I was not wanting to go out there with a car that's going to do donuts or something like that. So I pretty much left it alone and just put a bunch of tool right in there and see what the car could do. But honestly, I would have probably changed uh, the front spring, most likely number one, and possibly even went to a spring stiffer on the, the center shock. You know, maybe even tried to play with the height a little bit to get the steer a little more. Again, it's sometimes you run out of time, you just kind of got to work with what you got without completely throwing your whole thing off. Easiest thing to do was, like I said, just to um, just to change the dual rate, put more steering in the car and just see what, what it would do. So um, that, was, that was pretty key. Um, as far as what else on the car itself um, and this is maybe something else that could have been changed too initially with the car not having as much grip as it wound up having with the the lead um, I went to the plastic uh, camber, the stock camber plate setup deal, whatever um, this I went and measured everything on here. This is actually um, has a less amount of camber built into it than even the aluminum one. I, I assumed for some reason that the aluminum one actually may have had this, you know, was a reproduction of this, but this actually either has a half a degree or like zero, and then I, and it, it might be, it might be zero and a half, I think. Because the the aluminum one, the holes are further apart, indicating, or excuse me, the, the holes are closer together, indicating it would have more camber by sucking the arms in. Um, so I did run basically the, the least amount of camber in the car, which again, had I gone to more camber, maybe that also would have made the car turn a little more. Um, probably would have been helpful. You know, I mean, it, to put it this way, this this is as much lead as I had with me, and to be honest with you, if I could have put more on here, I would have. That's how much of a difference it made. But again, it's to my track, to my tracks, different than most tracks. In terms of how much grip there is out there, it really doesn't have a ton. So you kind of got to get as much grip into the car as you can. Um, so, that being said, um, you know, and I did see at one point, you know, the, the kid who won Austin, I know he had he had to at one point put um lead like I am not sure if it was on top of the arm or under the arm. He had a lot there. Um and and probably I would assume he was trying it on different spots around the car, but as soon you know, I saw him in the first qualifier and his car was pretty good, but I know it, when I saw it the next time it was way faster with the lead like this and he just had a ton of it. It was like he actually used 
he had some really big pieces that he used to like cantilever out and then stack more on top of. So he really had a ton on there. Um, you know, so that was a great idea by him. Did a great job. You know, <laughs> he figured it all out uh, with time to spare. So definitely a good job for you know to him. Um, one thing too, I, this is a this is the F one four X one and. I did try a bunch of stuff as far as the stiffness of the car. I tried posts, you know, in the middle position, forward position, um, and I felt like the car was the most stable with the posts in the forward position. But um, you know, I, to me, it seems like the stiffening of the chassis makes the car uh, more stable in, in like the you know when you're kind of in the in the middle of the corner. Um, and out, it seems like it helps to stabilize it a little bit. So what I wound up doing was actually putting the the uh, the graphite chassis on there, which the graphite chassis helped to um, I think stabilize the car a little bit. It was like in between in between the, the FRP stuff as far as the stability goes. It seemed like it was maybe a little more stable. Um, because there were times where I thought about going to a long deck um, so my my buddy Todd Marshall had had a long deck on his car and his car was like really good really easy to drive um, with the, the full upper deck and then I think it was FRP full upper deck, full lower deck um, and like I said his car was really good I was I was pretty impressed with how good his car was for especially because it was just a it was just a, fact, I'm not even sure it was a pro car to be honest I can't remember <laughs> You know, but it was a good car for sure. Um, trying to think what else. I now I wound up putting this is the shorter black ball stud, the aluminum ball stud. They let me go on that, you know, because they told all the stuff I usually do with the front end, lowering everything down and spacers and everything. They said, no, no, no you can't do that. Um, you know, spacers here, you have to. Everything has to be air quotes kit. Um, so, this is, I think they let me go with this because this was like a, it's a part you can buy that's a standard to my part, so I think that's why that was cool. I, I'm not sure, but whatever, it was cool by them. Um, i trying to think of anything else that's really, too, really important. You know, I ran, I ran Black Springs with the, uh, the offset 3.5 millimeter offset arm on the front, um, you know, which makes the car easier to drive. Generally, um, the black springs. I don't know. I would like I said. I probably would went to gold springs. Um, had I had enough time to fool around with this, had I tried this earlier on. And, and to be honest with you, this actually, I think, this is probably one of the better ideas because if you look at F103, you know, the batteries across the chassis like this. It gets the weight bias forward back. And the other thing too is it kind of, you know, the, the car's going to want to roll around a little bit more because the weight's kind of like an outrigger. And I think that was helping to get more weight onto the tires because, um, I don't know, it's hard, it's kind of hard to see I don't know how, how well it, it's going to show here. Um, the tires are, they look pretty good. There's not like a ton of, um, you know, they're they're not really ripped up. They're not they the the feathering looks nice on there. They're you know they're they're not like really grained badly. The tires I was using, were actually were coming off with one run. They were they were grained pretty pretty badly. In fact, um, I don't have a set right in front of me, but they they look bad compared to this. You know. Um, the fronts I ran, I was able to run multiple times the fronts that, that seemed to kind of balance the car the way I wanted it. Now, that being said, um, I was heating the tires up and using buggy grip with Jack the Gripper. Um, or actually SXT 3.0, which is extremely similar. It's like a copy. Um, and the thing you got to watch out for, you know, you kind of have to basically check your tires see how they feel because um, what happened was which didn't help my efforts um, qualifiers 
two and three.